Oh my god. It's over. I can't believe it's over. <laughs> Breaking news. Stephen Miller plans to deport all people that wear suit jackets with shorts while working from home. More on that tonight at 6 p.m. after the weather. No, 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 and back to you, Johnson. No, no, no. Son of a... While the one-term President Trump throws tantrums and talks about issues of national importance, for example... Dumps. They call them dumps. Big, massive dumps. <laughs> the administration, knowing that the end is near, is rushing through a few last-minute immigration changes that could affect you or someone that you know. What's going on, everyone? This is Leo, the lawyer of De La Garza Law, PLLC, an immigration law firm based out of Austin, Texas, bringing you the latest updates from the world of immigration in hopefully an entertaining way. What changes is the Trump administration trying to rush through the door on their way out? Let's find out. First, the Department of State issued a temporary final rule creating a six-month pilot program under which applicants for B-1 and B-2 visas, in other words, tourists or visitors, for business or for pleasure, they may be required to post a bond of somewhere between five and $15,000. This program would apply to applicants from countries that have relatively high overstay rates, about 10% or more. Countries such as Afghanistan, Bhutan, Chad, Eritrea, Iran, Liberia, Sudan, and Yemen. The other part of this is that the individual must have been granted a waiver of inadmissibility. The rule goes into effect December 24th, 2020, and this is set to last about six months into June of 2021. Because it is a pilot program, we can hope that the Biden administration won't bring it back or that they won't expand the program. And look, I get it. Overstays have been a problem for immigration agencies for a long time, but there are at least some individuals that may have family members or business partners that will now have to pay some big bucks simply to pursue their travel plans, all because the Trump administration wants to use them as a last minute guinea pig. Removal or deport. <laughs> Unlike this pilot program, the next proposed change we're talking about is bad news for asylum seekers or those who have been in removal proceedings. Hey guys, a quick side note, Immigration is constantly changing, so it's important you consult with a qualified immigration attorney and do your best to stay up to date. So take a moment to like this video, subscribe, hit the notification button, do all that good stuff so you can stay up to date with the latest that's going on in a constantly fluctuating field. Can you guess what kind of changes the Trump administration would want to implement for people that are facing deportation? Do you think they would be A, good, or B, a bad? That's right! Bad. Bad. One rule would allow immigration judges the ability to barrel forward in removal proceedings without granting a continuance for an individual to get a lawyer. And that's if more than 30 days have passed since the case was initiated through the filing of a notice to appear. Now that's saying a lot, but the basic point of it is you have less time to prepare and to conduct your own defense in a deportation case. So time is a crucial element. Sometimes a person finds themselves in removal proceedings, but they're able to qualify for another type of relief or another way to fix their immigration papers outside of court. But with this rule, they probably wouldn't even give them a chance to try to make things right. Now, this would cut out potential time that could literally save a person's life all in the name of judicial efficiency. At the same time, another rule seeks to eliminate the ability for immigration judges to be able to close their own cases. Closing a case can stop a deportation from happening. Back in the prior administration, well, judges had the ability to manage their own dockets. And they would say, okay, let's just close this case for now. And if we need to, we can open it later. This is one way of knowing that the Trump administration believes that immigration courts are deportation machines. When you simultaneously put pressure on a judge to 
take care and reduce their caseload and you also make it so that they can't reduce their caseload other than through deporting people well it's kind of clear where your interests truly lie now there is a complicated area of law that allowed immigrants to reopen their immigration cases which is sometimes necessary in order to have another chance or to have your day in court now imagine if you missed your court date because the court appearance letter got lost in the mail and it's okay so then once you find out about it you follow up you try to fix it and imagine that they just told you well uh too late you're screwed this is a short list there are other rules policies and practices that have gone into effect and you should know that it's possible that these rules won't go into effect either because of the timing or because they may be stopped by a federal court for being arbitrary or punishing immigrants without a sufficient reason. What are your thoughts on these last second rule changes? Let me know in the comments below. So we can talk about these rules in a lot more detail, but I wanted to give you a general overview. If you have specific questions about you or your family's potential immigration case, feel free to contact me, Leo the lawyer, and schedule a confidential virtual consultation. Our scheduling link is in the description below. Now, this has been Leo the Lawyer. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Peace out.